Hey guys, I recently did a video on things to never get rid of when you're decluttering. And I got a lot of comments from people telling me, well, I don't have an attic, I don't have a basement, I don't have anywhere to store my items, so what do I do? So that's exactly what the, today's video is for, how to declutter when you have no storage space at all. This is definitely way more challenging, but it can be done. I'm going to share four simple steps that you can do when you have no storage space. This will work if you have no storage space, if you've got a large home and you're maybe gonna be downsizing or you're gonna be moving into a smaller space. I have packed this video with tips and these are all very implementable. I used to live in a 800 and something square foot apartment with my husband and our two-year-old baby. My mother-in-law was staying with us for a little over a year. I know how challenging it is. We had no storage in that apartment. Back then, I was much less organized, and if I could go back and do it differently, this is exactly what I would do. Step one is to stop the inflow, and I'm gonna give you some ideas how to do this, but this is very important to do. One of the things, and I'll just give you a few things that you can try here, but one of them is to never buy in bulk. You do not have anywhere to store the items, so just don't bother buying in bulk. I will also say don't buy backups of items. I used to do this and I had to stop when I was living in my apartment. So I would have a bottle of shampoo and before it was gone, I would have a backup or I would buy a different kind and I would just have it around sitting in the shower, taking up space. Same thing in the pantry, you know, all of the places where you buy backups. And then the other thing that you're gonna need to do, and I've, I've been trying to do this myself, it's the one in, two out rule. And I know that that's not the rule. I know it's the one in, one out rule, but this is going to be a much stricter version. We're going to be doing it a little bit more drastically. So anything that comes in the house, any one thing, two need to go out. We're just gonna be a little more aggressive with this rule, so go for two. I would also say if you are going shopping or going to thrift stores, kind of going out as a hobby or something to do, I would also encourage you to kind of rethink how you're spending your time and what you're doing because it's you want to spend your time in a way that's going to support your goal. I recently did a video, Atomic Decluttering Habits. I'll actually link it if you want to watch it after this video. The author James Clear in the book, he talked about setting up your lifestyle in a way that supports the way that you wanna live. So if you wanna become decluttered and you wanna buy less, you really need to set up your day so that you're actually not going to stores and you're buying less. And so one of the ideas that I gave is if you pass a certain store on your way home from work and it just calls you in and you go in and you do some window shopping, maybe you do some actual shopping, do a different commute, go a different direction, go a different way so that you can change your environment to support your goals. Now comes step two, and this is the decluttering step, and I'm gonna call this step the rationalization. This step is going to be, of course, a little bit more time consuming, but the way that I like to do this is I like to go by room. A lot of decluttering experts will tell you that you need to look at each room and determine its purpose, and then that will help you as you go into your decluttering. For me, I don't really have any extra rooms, so kind of all of the rooms that we do have, they have a predefined purpose. You know, we've got a kitchen, we've got a living room, we've got our bedrooms. I don't have any rooms that we're not sure what to do with. If you do, this could be a good helpful tip for you. I think this comes from Dana K. White. She's a decluttering expert, but she suggests that that's a good way to start if you're unsure of where to begin in the room. But I still suggest going room by room, and what I would say is go into each room and start with a category that you wanna start decluttering. And when I do this, I will have that category, so say it's books, I will pull out all of the books in that room and start there. Maybe it's your shoes and you're gonna pull out all of your shoes. So what I like to do is I will pull everything out and then I will create two piles. One pile is going to be the stuff that I use often or daily. The second pile is going to be stuff that I rarely or very infrequently use. Then you're going to put back everything that you use every day because obviously you use it, it's not clutter and you wanna keep it, so you put that away. Then kind of sit with it, give it some time. If you've put your shoes back into a storage space, maybe use that storage space for a day and see how you feel. And what's gonna happen? I bet you that that pile of stuff that you don't use very often, you're gonna look at it in a different light and you're gonna tell yourself, I don't really want this to be put back. I don't really need this stuff. And then you're gonna know that that's what you declutter. 
I mean, obviously, if there are things in that pile that you want, take them out and put them with the things that you use every day. But I think separating it into these two piles, one that's got the frequent use and one that has infrequent use is a really good way to look at your stuff. Some of the questions that I ask myself when I'm decluttering, because I find that it really helps to ask these questions, but one of them is, will I need this item as a backup? Or when was the last time I used this item? Will I actually use this item? Will I use it eventually? If I do declutter it, can I replace it if I need to? Is it sentimental? For sentimental items, these are obviously a much more difficult category. I'm just gonna tell you what I did. I think this is a good way to handle it. I encourage you to make a box of your sentimental items. So you could just determine what size box is good for you and then go ahead and store your items in there. And however many can fit, that's how many you can keep. If you've got extra, call your family, call your friends. If you've got it and you're not using it, maybe they would like to have it. But as you're doing this, just remember, because with sentimental items, sometimes we get caught up into it. And just remember, if everything is special, then nothing is special. If you have things that you wanna get rid of and they're in good condition, obviously donating, donating them is a perfect thing to do. You would consider selling them. I do have a personal rule that if I cannot get more than $50 for an item, I just don't sell it. I don't find it worth it to go back and forth with people on price or having people come over, all of that. So I just kind of err on the side of $50 or less, I'm gonna donate it. And as you're going through this, just remember that decluttering as a process is meant to make you feel happy and relaxed. So it should be an enjoyable project and maybe I'm a weirdo. I do find decluttering to be very calming. Oh, and one of my favorite questions that I ask myself, and, and I love doing this and I think this could help you a lot, is as you're decluttering something, try this little trick and say to yourself, tomorrow I'm gonna be moving into my dream home. Would I actually pay someone to pack this item up, transport it to my new home, and can I picture it in my new home? I find that this is really helpful because then you can kind of start to see your things for what they are. And if it doesn't really fit in this vision you have for your new home, then don't take it, then don't keep it. And ultimately, just remember this, the more things that you have, the more these things detract from one another. By the way, if you aren't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that button down below, it's free. Now comes the fun part, and it is the organizing of things, and I'm gonna call this step the fine tuning. And we've already gotten rid of a number of things, so we have less clutter, but if you don't have the attics, if you don't have the basements, don't worry, I've got you covered, here's what we're gonna do. So I have a lot of ideas, but one of the things that is a must do is that you're going to need to increase your storage space. I've got some creative thoughts here, this is what I would do and this is what I have done. If you've got, I've talked about this before that I kind of hate these because then they get all dusty, but if you've got cabinets that don't go all the way to the ceiling, consider using that vertical space. Consider figuring out if you've got tops of closets, tops of cabinets that you can store things that you use very infrequently. Or under your bed, this, I like to keep my under bed clean, but you know what? Sometimes we don't have that luxury and sometimes we need to store things under our bed. So you can get some storage containers and put them under your bed and use that space, that hidden space, as a storage space. I also really like to use furniture that's multifunctional. I find that if you can find things like storage ottomans or maybe tables that could double up as desks, I think that really helps to save space and I really enjoy that it has a multi-purpose. We also have a sofa bed, for example, so when we have guests, they can just sleep. We pull out the sofa and it's really easy. We don't have to worry about having a whole guest room or anything like that. What I think here is the most important thing that you're gonna need if you do not have storage space or closets and things like that, storage boxes are going to have to be your best friend. This saved me when I was in my apartment because if I did not have these storage boxes, I don't know what we would have done. So this is one thing I did do. But the easiest way that I think that you can think about these storage boxes is to think of each box as its own category. So you are going to identify the categories of things that you need. Maybe you need a box for Christmas decor, a box for medical supplies, a box for shower essentials. Think of the things you use and the categories you have and you are going to group and store these items together. I was looking online and I saw this story of this woman who had five half-used bottles of spray window cleaner. Until she did this method, she didn't even know that she had all of these bottles and she said that she had lost the bottles so then she went out and bought more and then she would find, I mean, it was just a whole big mess. So now that she knows, she's got one storage box for all of her cleaning supplies. 
And if you keep things grouped like this, you will always know where to find them. This kind of goes along with uh, Dana K. White again. She has this container concept and she says, put your things in a container and you can have as much as that container will fit. And once that container is full, can't have any more. Make sure that your storage boxes are easy to use. So you, for example, don't wanna have a giant box to store jewelry in or batteries small things, right? You want to have the appropriate size box for the thing that you're storing. So kind of think of it on the level of micro organization because you want to make sure that your storage boxes are easily accessible. You can find things quickly and easily. You don't want to get this huge bin that's full and then you never have any desire to look and see what's inside of it. So think about micro organization for things like jewelry, vitamins, cords, cables, batteries, that kind of a thing. And label your boxes so that you know what's in them. I also like to use clear boxes so I can see inside. Whatever you can do to try and make it easier to put stuff away than it is to leave it lying out. Some things you can do beyond the labeling is you could use hooks for this, drawer organizers, drop zones are always great, and also rotating seasonal items helps a lot with this. Okay, now comes the maintenance part. You did all of this work, you decluttered, you organized. In this step, you still want to be careful about what you're bringing into your home. So you're still going to be thinking about mindful consumption and stopping the inflow. I mean, really, you did all of this work, you've got all your storage set up, you know where things are. It's going to be, you're going to be able to maintain it, but it's going to take a little bit of effort. I also, even in my own home, as I'm going through decluttering, do some di things differently now so that I can control that inflow. Some examples are, if you like throw pillows, for example, instead of buying all new throw pillows every season or each year, instead just buy the pillow covers and then you can put your existing pillows into those covers and those covers take up a fraction of the space. Instead of buying books, maybe get electronic books. Or if you're a crafty person, maybe you've got a lot of craft supplies. Tell yourself, I'm not gonna buy any more craft supplies until I've completed however many projects. And then that way it kind of gets you into this discipline so that you're controlling the inflow, but you're still able to use what you have. Or if you're tempted to buy more shampoo, more face stuff, just think about your shower essentials and your box that you're storing that in. Do you have the space? Will it fit? I also think it's really important for this maintenance to incorporate a daily tidy. I have to do multiple daily tidies because I have three kids. I mean, they get in on it too, but the house just... You just have to stay on top of it, right? So you could just set a timer five or 10 minutes in the morning, five or 10 minutes in the evening, and just do that daily tidy. Put things back where they belong. You wanna make sure everything has a home and put it back into that home after you've used it so that you don't get to a week or two later and you have to spend an hour tidying up. Okay guys, those are my tips. If you are decluttering for downsizing or if you just simply don't have storage space, I hope they were helpful. If you wanna keep the decluttering going, I'm gonna link a video. Go ahead and click on it and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.